When you're watching her, Rita Hayworth can make you feel as if you are the only person in the world. She can make you feel like time is immaterial. She seems to look at you through time. Your gaze reanimates her. Director Charles Vidor, no relation to the one and only King, saw something in Rita Hayworth, as did a lot of men in her time. The thing is that no one ever photographed her like Vidor. Orson Welles directed her in The Lady from Shanghai and was even married to her during that period, but even Welles himself could not capture the impenetrable psychology of her appeal. He could not conjure the power of Gilda. Orson was far more interested in himself than his wife's unearthly screen image. The lady from Shanghai had many sordid purposes. Gilda had only one, to drive you to sexual obsession. Women who demanded to be photographed and photographed well, these are women who were living masterpieces. They expressed galaxies of truth and magic with their beauty. They were blessed with God-given emotive and expressive powers. But the full totality of their abilities were only fully realized when they were photographed by men who absolutely understood their supernatural appeal and projected the infinite range of their untapped potential. It's beyond sex appeal. Rita Hayworth's body was overwhelmingly flawless. It's about an inexpressible presence. It's about a very intoxicating woman. Rita Hayworth was a muse that no artist could ever comprehend. In 1946, it was clear to her that she was going to have to perform all of the heavy lifting. I believe she knew her inconceivable worth. I believe Gilda's genius is a result of the sex symbol herself cementing her own legend. Rita Hayworth went into Gilda to express the incomprehensible scope of her lips, to express the inexpressible language of her legs, the unthinkable magic of a hair flip, the poetry of her unbelievable physicality, the range of undying attractions, and the eons of unknowable eroticism in her gaze. Rita Hayworth was a muse that no artist could touch. No one man could possess her, could understand her. Gilda gave Rita Hayworth to us. Rita Hayworth was the muse of America. She gave herself to the screen not as an object, but as a religious symbol. Inside the church of incomprehensible sexual desire, Rita is God. She is our muse, and we are still under her spell. We are still lost in her lips. Gilda's composition is a complicated mood, where film noir ends and women's pictures begin. There is a cosmic landscape of sexuality. Since Gilda was a film possessed by an erotic monomania, it was singularly obsessed with its star. The film owes its shadows to film noir and its men to hard-boiled tragedies. Its woman belongs to infinity and infinity alone. Gilda, are you decent? Hate is a very exciting emotion. It's possibly more exciting than love. One is often mistaken for the other. A sex symbol is hated and desired more than it is revered and loved. We are jealous of the attention these symbols receive from the world. We're upset that they make us watch. We're driven to hate because by definitions of sirens, we can't look away. And these beautiful women know that. Johnny Farrell punishes Gilda. He imprisons her in empty opulence. The most cruel thing he does to her is that he treats her dispassionately. The one thing Gilda lives for is passion. If you take that away from her, you take away 
the air that keeps her alive. You needlessly suffocate her in a dispassionate prison in a cage. Gilda is an anomaly made from passion. It's the one concept that keeps her human. The one thing that keeps Gilda grounded is her perfect passion. Gilda's men are framed as desperate long before Rita Hayworth flips her hair back and looks into the camera with a smile. The men pay tribute to mock fatalism and phallic instruments of death. Both Johnny and Bylan are framed as symbolically impotent. Fedor's symbolic juxtaposition of Gilda's tireless desirability with the powerlessness of the men she interacts with is brilliantly achieved. These men become ineffectual and without logic, without decency, when they're around her and absorbed by her atmosphere. This brings us to the most important theme of Gilda, its most important concept, decency. Gilda is endlessly accused of having no decency. But what is it that makes a woman decent? Freedom. Albert Camus once said, the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Goddesses will be goddesses, they will be divine. There is an exalted beauty in all femme fatales. They are the women who possess forward momentum. They refuse to be objects. They are deadly, they are beautiful, and they are free. Gilda's passions were acrobatic demonstrations of her feminine freedom, of her own erotic liberty. Her entire appeal, everything that made her unbelievably sexy, was performed for the sake of rebellion. Gilda rebelled against passionless men. She rebelled against a universe that kept worshipped women in cages. Gilda rebelled against a world that wanted to own her. She wanted to be experienced. Gilda wanted to be experienced. She wanted to be venerated. She wanted someone to treat her passionately. If she could not pull lust from these men, she would settle for hatred, something with an emotional pulse, something that had feelings. Gilda's life was played out on the stage of the male gaze. Hers was a theater of sexuality. It was a near farce played out by a woman who knew exactly what she was doing. She was full of truth and emotion. She wanted to be felt. She wanted someone to return her truth and reciprocate emotions. Gilda was caught in an unfeeling world of unable men. She was a goddess without a temple. Rita Hayworth was a religious experience. All bad things end up lonely. I feel like I should discuss Bikini Atoll briefly. I feel like I should talk about the nuclear testing, the picture of Rita Hayworth attached to the outer shell casing, the word Gilda written on the nuke in homage to the living bombshell. I feel like I should express how it made Hayworth furious. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you not to blaspheme not to anger the gods. I feel like I shouldn't have to tell you that she's watching. Gilda is a masterwork. It's one of those unearthly masterworks that owes everything magical about it to its woman. Rita Hayworth will cast a spell on you and you will be grateful for the hex. You will fantasize about her. She will never seem real. She will always remain a mystery. She will live in your heart as an enigma of passion and feeling. When you feel like it was all just for you, she has you. You'll never be free again. 
and you'll never want to be free of her either. Some women demand to be photographed. Some women must be documented as a register of the wonders of human biology and evolution. Some women need to be recorded. If Rita Hayworth was never photographed, I would not believe she ever truly existed. Even after seeing Gilda, I can hardly comprehend that it's real. Her beauty is too much, too incomprehensibly mammoth for me to process, for me to accept. Gilda has mystified me. Rita Hayworth destroys me. Like a bomb. Like a nuclear bomb. One of the best films ever made. Oh my god, one of the best films ever made. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. This is Zachary Conan saying, God damn, Rita. God damn.